Hi, I'm Paul Kasabian, I'm a structural engineer, and this is the second part on how columns work. We can see large columns on uh, the Parthenon, we can see slender columns on Charlie Chaplin's uh, buckling walking cane. So that's what we're going to be covering into how to stop columns buckling. And just to put this into context, uh, one of my earlier videos was about the primary colors of structures, right? There's a certain limited number of structure types, but there's an infinite number of ways that we can mix them, combine them, and produce overall structures, just like primary colors, infinite colors that you mix, infinite paintings you can paint. And so we've covered the cable, we've covered the reverse of the cable, the arch, we took a little detour into domes, um, and today we're finishing off with columns. And coming up will be trusses, beams, and frames. So exciting times. Now, if we have a column, this is how we're going to see these. They're in blue because they're in compression. This one is pinned top and bottom with the white circles, and we're going to put a weight on the top of it. And we're going to see, in this case, that the column buckles under that weight of one cartoon-like anvil, right? And it's got this height. And this is going to be the first of the two types of things we're going to look at for how we can deal and manage and design with how columns behave. The height and then the cross-section area and its shape. So here's about how we're going to deal with the height. So for this height, it wants to buckle at one anvil weight. But if we half the height of that column, we no longer have it buckle under one. In fact, it will only buckle under the weight of four of the same weight, which is quite interesting. We've, it's actually the inverse square. So if you half the height of that column, one over two, inverse it two and square four, it carries four times the weight when you half the height. So if you make a column a third of the height, it could carry nine times the weight. That's sort of good to know how powerful that is, except we don't usually have a perfect solution by saying, you know what, I, I need to carry extra weight, let's just have half the height of floors to live in. That just doesn't sort of pan out regularly. Um, so this is a comparison with one weight at the top, four weights on the half height column. Notice again, this is both columns are pinned top and bottom. So here's something I showed in that last video. If I grabbed the, when I grabbed the top and bottom and stopped them rotating, it can be that full height, but carry four times the load. So somehow I've halved the height of the column by not allowing it to rotate at the top and bottom of that full height. And so let's compare that to what we have, that same height of column, which was allowed to rotate. Now the only thing we're changing is we're not letting it rotate, right? Which is kind of interesting. And then let's look at that um, in comparison to that other half height column that was pinned that could also carry four times the load. So this one on the right and the one in the middle, these are similar in many ways because if you look at the way that the curvature of this half height column goes all in one direction, that's kind of similar to here. And you may think, well, we don't have pins here, right? But we'll get to that. And then notice how the curvature goes the other way around, right? It goes kind of to the left. It bellies out to the left, then it kind of goes, bellies out to the right, and then it bellies out to the left again. And that's really important because uh, something that's related to each other are, are bending, bending moments, and curvature. In fact, more precisely, bending moment to change of curvature. So f for sort of example reasons, because I just happen to have this rod with me. This rod is straight and it doesn't have any bending in it and it doesn't matter which way round it is, right? So if I have this rod sort of slanted the same way as this part is slanted here, it's straight. And it's only if I change the curvature of this rod that it goes into bending and it can bend one way or it can bend uh, the other way, right? And so that's what we're seeing here. It's bending to the right, and therefore, as it's going back to bending to the left, that part of the column hasn't changed curvature. It is slanted, but it hasn't changed curvature. That means there's no bending moment in it. That means it's like a pin. 
So if I go to put in little dash circles there, because it's like a pin, right? Then that lets us understand how powerful it is to restrain the top and bottom of a full height column to carry four times the load. If you're wondering what restraining um, the bottom of a top of a column is, it's not much to it. You're really making sure you're grabbing the perimeter of the column. So this is uh, actually a, a, a wide flange steel column or an eye shape as some people call it. We've welded all of it down to a very thick base plate, thick because the base plate also wants to bend, and then we've anchored that base plate down and stopping all of that rotating. It doesn't necessarily look pretty, but it works well and it might get covered up. Although we'd probably want our columns to look better and we'll get to that next. So now let's talk about the other thing we can change with columns, which is the cross-sectional shape and area, and how we put that material um, of the column. I think last time I showed you a rod, and then an angle, and then a tube. So you might already know where this is going, but we're going to talk a bit more about it. And what I've got here, for illustration purposes, is a solid round column that's easily carrying this, this one weight up at the top. And what's actually down here, um, imagine this is the, if I picked up the column and I put it on a weight scale, this is an indication of how much that column weighs. And here that scale is really, you know, far over because it's a really heavy column and we really don't need all of that column material. In fact, all that material that's in the middle isn't really doing anything to help carry the weight or prevent the column from buckling. So we could hollow it out just like that. We hollowed out the middle, there it is hollow, and it's a little lighter than it was before. Great, it still looks the same from the outside, it just happens to be a lighter column. Now, given that it's the material uh, uh, and how it's distributed around the cross section that's helping us against buckling, if we move that material further out, it's even more effective. So I can move it out like that, the column wall thickness can now be thinner than it was before, and it's even lighter than it was before. Let me go back. There it is, a little smaller, thicker, and if I go forward, uh, wider, thinner, and the column is lighter for carrying that same single load at the top. Now that's good in terms of the weight of the column, but from the outside, we're still seeing now quite a wide column, right? Like we don't see that it's hollow. Um, but we also happen to know that columns buckle about the middle if it pivots from the top to the bottom. So we really only need this full width here in the middle. We don't necessarily need it top and bottom. So we could actually shape the column and taper it at the top, taper it down to the bottom, make a kind of what's called a classic cigar shaped column it's called. And then that would provide the same resistance to buckling, but be even lighter. And now here's an interesting thing to keep in mind. The compression is going down the column from the top all around the outside. But what's stopping the shape from bursting is a set of horizontal tension that's in this column. And we've seen that before, actually. We've seen that when we did domes. We had the compression going from the top to the bottom, and then we had horizontal tension stopping that spread, right, of of the material, restraining all the, the curving out compression. So we can take this one more step. We can distribute solid area around the outside and we could restrain it from buckling. It creates this kind of a column. This is about as light a column as you could possibly get, where you have solid rods going from top to bottom. They are shaped overall in that tapered, efficient column form. And you've got here shown in red, horizontal tension restraining each of these from bursting outwards themselves. And this is a very efficient column structure in terms of material usage. And I've got an example of this. I showed this to you before, I think in the first video, which is the Lockmeadow footbridge in Kent. And these are the towers, the masts, columns, you can, different words for exactly the same thing, something carrying compression from top to bottom. And they're holding the cables that are in tension that are holding the bridge. And so you've got that tapered form. It's a bit grainy, the photograph, but if I go to a close-up here, we've got uh, all the things we've talked about. Solid rods tapered from top to bottom. They're distributed far away and they're restrained against buckling with these straight, well, straight between, slightly curved steel members 
that only need to go from one to the other, which means we could hollow it out, there was actually a light that shone up the inside, to form a very lightweight, efficient use of material column that's all in compression. So there we go, one wonderful, beautiful column.